As the sun began to set on the city skyline, Caroline sat alone in her dimly lit apartment, staring at her laptop screen. She had been scrolling through job postings for hours, her mind consumed by the fear of making the wrong decision. Every potential opportunity seemed to come with a daunting level of risk, and the weight of it all was beginning to crush her spirit. Just as she was about to give up, a notification popped up on her screen. It was an invitation to speak at an upcoming conference, an opportunity that could potentially launch her career to new heights. But with the invitation came a flood of questions and doubts. What if she stumbled over her words? What if she failed to impress the crowd? The risk seemed too great. As she sat there in silence, Caroline began to realize that her fear of risk was holding her back from reaching her true potential. She needed to learn how to embrace it, to see it as an evolving state of uncertainty and promise. And that's when she stumbled upon a book that promised to show her how to do just that. As she delved into its pages, she discovered a new way of thinking about risk, one that allowed her to take calculated risks without being crippled by fear. She learned how to handle the headwinds and tailwinds of her career, how to balance her fear of failure against her fear of missing out, and most importantly, how to create her own opportunities by choosing possibility over fear. Caroline's journey was far from over, but as she closed the book and gazed out at the city skyline, she felt a newfound sense of courage and determination. She was ready to take on the world, one risk at a time. Chapter 1. Singh Cassidy was nervous as she boarded the train, but she knew it was time to take a chance. She arrived in the city and began exploring, taking on any opportunity that came her way. She interviewed at a small investment bank, applied for a management consultant position at a large firm, and even took on a role as a research assistant for a political analyst. Though she was uncertain about her future, Singh Cassidy felt energized by the variety of options before her. Each day, she learned something new and gained valuable experience in different industries. One evening, while attending a networking event, she met a group of entrepreneurs who were looking for someone with financial expertise to join their team. Singh Cassidy had never considered starting her own business, but the idea intrigued her. Over the next few weeks, she worked with the group to develop a business plan and secured funding from investors. Before she knew it, Singh Cassidy had become a co-founder of a successful startup. As she reflected on her journey, Singh Cassidy realized that by pursuing multiple options at once, she had freed herself from the constraints of the hero's journey. She had taken small risks, built momentum, and opened up new possibilities for herself. Through her experience, Singh Cassidy learned that success is not defined by a single choice or a single path. It is about exploring multiple options, taking small risks, and being open to the unexpected opportunities that come your way. So, if you find yourself feeling stuck or afraid of failure, remember Singh Cassidy's story. Embrace multiple options and take small risks. You may just find that the road less traveled leads to unexpected and thrilling success. Chapter 2. Singh Cassidy had always been driven by the idea of success. She had worked hard in college, applied to numerous top firms, and dreamed of power suits and CEO positions. But after numerous job rejections, she found herself back at her parents' house in Ontario, Canada, feeling defeated. As she struggled to find her footing, she received a fateful letter from Merrill Lynch inviting her to visit their New York City office. Her father recognized this as an opportunity and bought her a train ticket to New York on the spot. This turned out to be a stroke of luck for Singh Cassidy, as it led to an informal tour, a brief interview, and ultimately a tryout for a position as an analyst. After acing the tryout, she was offered the job. Singh Cassidy realized that being physically present was key to seizing opportunities, and this lesson continued to guide her as she moved to London and then San Francisco. But it wasn't just about being in the right place at the right time. Singh Cassidy embraced risk and was honest about her fears, which allowed her to take advantage of unexpected opportunities. As she settled into her new life in San Francisco, Singh Cassidy was approached by a former colleague who was starting a new company in the burgeoning tech industry. It was a risky move, but Singh Cassidy decided to take the leap and join the startup. The company quickly grew and went public, making Singh Cassidy a wealthy woman. Looking back, 
Singh Cassidy knew that her success was due in part to her willingness to take risks and embrace uncertainty. She had learned that fortune favored those who were physically present and willing to take chances. And while there was no guaranteed path to success, she knew that staying true to herself and being open to new opportunities would always pay off in the end. Chapter 3. Nikki felt a sense of dread wash over her as she watched her optometry business slowly crumble. Her once loyal patients had started to go elsewhere, and her employees were starting to worry about job security. Nikki knew she had to make a change, but she was paralyzed with fear. One night, while venting to her sister Singh Cassidy about her troubles, she was given a piece of advice that would change her life. To get momentum and take the leap, you must face your fear of loss, Singh Cassidy said. Nikki was skeptical. How could she face the loss of everything she had worked so hard for? But as the days went on, she found herself unable to shake the words from her mind. She knew she had to do something, anything, to turn things around. The first step was to name her worries. Nikki sat down with a piece of paper and a pen and wrote down all the things that scared her. She realized that her biggest fear was financial ruin. What if she lost everything and had nothing to show for it? Next, she imagined how things would seem over time. In three months, three years, or ten, would her problems loom as large? She realized that, although things might seem dire in the moment, they would eventually get better. Nikki knew that she needed a contingency plan to ward against lasting damage. She started exploring new opportunities and looking for low-stakes ways to generate income. When a job with potential came along, she was ready and able to take the plunge. It wasn't easy, but Nikki faced her fear of loss and came out on top. She lost her optometry practice, but regained her life and opened a new chapter in her career. And now, she could look back on her experience with gratitude. She had learned that sometimes, the greatest opportunities come from taking risks and facing our fears head on. Chapter 4. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Maya who was passionate about technology and innovation. She had worked in several companies, but she never felt like she belonged. She longed for a workplace that shared her passion and drive. One day, she stumbled upon a startup that promised to revolutionize the way people communicate through technology. The company was called Brightwave, and Maya was eager to join the team. Maya was thrilled when she got the job at Brightwave. She was excited to be part of such an innovative company and to work with people who shared her passion for technology. However, she soon realized that not everyone at Brightwave shared her enthusiasm. Some of her colleagues were content to do the bare minimum while others were more interested in office politics than in pushing the boundaries of technology. Maya felt out of place and frustrated. One day, Maya received an email from an old colleague, Singh Cassidy. Singh had recently joined a startup called Jungly, and she was looking for someone to help her with marketing. Maya was hesitant at first. She had just started at Brightwave, and she didn't want to leave so soon. But then she remembered the advice she had read about in a career book. When evaluating whether to make a career move, tip the scales in favor of people. Maya decided to take the leap and join Jungly. From the moment she walked into the office, she knew she had made the right decision. The people at Jungly were passionate, driven, and innovative. Maya felt like she had finally found her professional tribe. She threw herself into her work and quickly became an integral part of the team. At Jungly, Maya learned a lot from her colleagues. She worked closely with Singh, who became her mentor and friend. She also made other friends who shared her passion for technology. They would often stay late, bouncing ideas off each other and challenging each other to be better. As Maya's career progressed, she looked back on her time at Brightwave and realized that she had made the right decision in leaving. She realized that working with people who shared her passion was the key to her success. Maya went on to work at several other startups, but she never forgot the lessons she learned at Jungly. She always made sure to prioritize people when evaluating job opportunities, and she always looked for her professional tribe. And every time she found it, she knew she was on the right path. Chapter 5. In the world of tech, there are few who have had as much success as Singh Cassidy. She rose from a management position at Jungly to become one of the highest-ranking executives at Google. 
but she knows that much of her success is due to factors outside of her control. As Singh Cassidy reflected on her journey, she realized that the tech boom of the late 1990s and early 2000s had played a significant role in her success. She also understood that failure is not solely a result of individual abilities. Sometimes, headwinds can push against even the most talented and hardworking individuals. Jane Fraser, the first female CEO of Citigroup, understood this all too well. She faced headwinds in the form of the subprime mortgage crisis and the near collapse of Citigroup's Latin American banking operations. But she persevered and built rare, battle-tested skills that would serve her well in the future. Singh Cassidy knew that it was important to know yourself and your limitations. She recognized that struggling against a bad people fit wouldn't help in the long run. So, she took the time to examine her passions, talents, and values and asked herself whether they had a place at her company. And when the headwinds became too much to bear, she chose possibility and took the next risk. This approach paid off. Singh Cassidy built her own startup, Yodly, which sold for a large profit to Amazon. She then launched another successful tech company before joining Google and getting Google Maps off the ground. So, the lesson here is clear. Know yourself and your limitations, and recognize that success and failure are often shaped by factors outside of your control. But with resilience and a willingness to take risks, you can overcome headwinds and achieve great things. Chapter 6. Emma had always been a planner. From a young age, she had meticulously outlined her goals and worked tirelessly to achieve them. She was good at what she did, and her hard work had paid off. But as she approached her mid-thirties, Emma felt a restlessness creeping in. Was this all there was to life? Was she destined to continue down the same path forever? She couldn't shake off the feeling that there was something more out there for her. But what was it? She had always played it safe, taking calculated risks that wouldn't cause too much damage if they didn't pan out. But what if the risks were bigger? What if the stakes were higher? Could she handle it? One night, as she was scrolling through her social media feed, she came across an advertisement for a wilderness survival program. Emma had always been interested in the outdoors, but she had never had the chance to truly immerse herself in nature. The idea of spending a week in the wilderness, fending for herself and testing her limits, was both exhilarating and terrifying. Emma spent the next few days researching the program, looking for any information that could help her make a decision. She created a list of pros and cons, weighing the potential benefits of the experience against the risks. She talked to friends and family, seeking their input and perspective. As she went through this process, Emma realized that she had honed the tools she needed to make bigger risks. The same skills that had helped her navigate smaller challenges, prioritization, risk analysis, and intuition could be applied to larger ones. She realized that there was no single choice that could make or break her life, but rather a series of ongoing practices that would help her grow and evolve. Finally, Emma made her decision. She signed up for the Wilderness Survival Program and spent the next week testing her limits and learning new skills. It was challenging and exhausting, but also incredibly fulfilling. Emma emerged from the experience with a newfound confidence in her ability to handle whatever life threw her way. As she reflected on her journey, Emma realized that she had learned a valuable lesson. The tools she had honed on smaller risks could be combined to unpack bigger ones. By breaking down the potential costs and opportunities involved, she could demystify big risks and make informed decisions. And by listening to her gut, while interrogating it with data, she could find a solution that satisfied both her mind and her intuition. Chapter 7. Anu had always been passionate about fashion. From a young age, she had been cutting up old clothes and turning them into new designs. It was a dream of hers to start her own fashion brand, but she was afraid of the risks involved. One day, she came across a job listing for a fashion e-commerce platform called Polyvore. The job was for the CEO position, and while it was a big risk, she decided to go for it. After all, this could be the opportunity to jumpstart her career in fashion. Anu quickly realized that the founder of Polyvore, who was still involved in the company, had a very different vision for the future of the platform than she did. 
Despite her efforts to build a rapport with him, the two couldn't reconcile their differences, and she was let go. At first, Anu was devastated. She had thought that this was her big break, but it turned out to be a huge setback. However, she soon realized that this experience had given her a valuable opportunity to learn and grow. She had negotiated a stake in the company, which paid off when Polyvore was sold to Yahoo for a large sum of money. This provided her with the funds she needed to start her own fashion platform, Joyous. Starting Joyous was no easy task, and there were times when Anu wasn't sure if she could make it work. But she put her all into it, embracing both the nitty-gritty details and the big picture. She learned from her mistakes and sought new solutions to the challenges that came her way. As she worked hard and smart, Anu began to see the offshoots of her decisions grow over time. She gained a diverse set of skills, and new opportunities began to present themselves. Joyous started to take shape, and Anu knew that in five years' time, she would see if it was truly viable. Anu learned that risk and reward have a non-linear and often unpredictable relationship. Sometimes, a lost job can result in unexpected gains, and the results of our decisions may appear at unpredictable times. But by putting our passion into everything we do, embracing both the nitty-gritty and the big picture, and learning from our mistakes, we can generate new opportunities and maximize our professional growth. Chapter 8. Meet Maya, a driven and ambitious young woman who had just launched her own startup, an e-commerce platform that sells sustainable fashion. Maya had a small team, but they were all hardworking and passionate about the mission. Like Sing Cassidy's Joyous, Maya's platform utilized videos as a primary feature to showcase the products. Maya poured all of her time, energy, and resources into making the videos as beautiful and interactive as possible. However, as the platform gained traction, Maya began to notice that the cost of production was eating away at their revenue. She tried to balance this by cutting corners, but the quality of the videos suffered, and sales started to drop. Maya was devastated. She had put so much into this venture, and it felt like it was all slipping away. But then she remembered the story of Singh Cassidy and Joyous. Maya realized that this was a learning opportunity. She needed to take a step back and assess the situation objectively. She identified the problem of balancing multiple goals, just like Joyous. She also recognized that she needed to listen to feedback and address weaknesses. After much contemplation, Maya realized that she needed to move on from this venture. It was time to look for a new challenge. However, she didn't want to leave a mess. Maya continued to give her team her maximum effort right through to her last day. She shared what she had learned, and she made sure to tee up her colleagues for success. Maya knew that the people she had worked with would have a continuing influence on her opportunities. She wanted to make sure that she left a positive impression. So, she decided to take a page out of Singh Cassidy's book and create opportunities for others. Maya decided to start a mentorship program for women who were interested in starting their own sustainable fashion businesses. She used her platform and her connections to find and connect with these women, providing them with the guidance and resources they needed to succeed. Maya saw that the truly powerful let their power flow to those around them. Through this mentorship program, Maya discovered the most meaningful project of her career. She saw that by choosing possibility and then sharing it, she could make a real difference in people's lives. Maya realized that power comes from choice and generosity. Maya's mentorship program grew and grew, and she continued to find ways to support and empower women in the fashion industry. Eventually, Maya was recognized for her contributions, and she was invited to join the board of a major fashion company. Maya had learned from failure and, when the time came, she had moved on in a way that created more opportunity. By sharing her power and choosing possibility, Maya had created a cycle of growth and opportunity for women in tech and fashion. And she knew that this was just the beginning. Finally, the insights and knowledge I gained from reading Choose Possibility were phenomenal. I highly recommend it. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content. Trust me, you won't regret it.